What? Uh-oh, I'm in trouble. What am I going to get her this year? What am I going to get her this year? Let's check the list. Mm -hmm. Yes. Done, 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 done. Ooh, that was a bad idea. Done, done, done. Custom, useful, super thoughtful gift. Hmm. I got an idea. Yeah, let's go. Hey there, CNC here. Scott here again for CNC Labs. With Mother's Day around the corner, and as a father of three, uh, I kind of struggle with what to get or what to make every year because there's only so many number one mom items that you can hand out before they kind of just clutter up and get stuffed at the back of a closet. So uh, we were, we, I was trying to come up with an idea because that's where I've kind of gone in the last few years. Instead of getting like the mom, mom, Mother's Day things, I've started to kind of try and find things that are useful um, or, you know, decorative or pretty stuff that is not so uh, Mother's Day specific so that it can be kind of used all year round. Um, you know, I've done some decor things. I've done some, you know, a charcuterie board, some of those things over the years. Um, and I find that they just get infinitely more used than those mom Mother's Day specific things. So if you're not sure what to make, we came up with, I came up with again, something that, haha, -ha, everybody can use everybody can use around the kitchen. So we have three different files that we've popped out for you. A serving spoon, a serving fork, and a spatula or flipper. Take your pick on which one it is. And while that's lovely, uh, and you know, they're useful, we thought we would kick it up a little bit of a notch and we would try and, can we see this? Come on, focus. Not on me, on this. Let's try that again. Whoop. We focused, we focused. We kicked it up by customizing it with something that your, you know, your kid's name or something they've drawn or written so that it is not only functional, but it is also customized and holds a special place in mom's heart. So the other great part about this project is we are kind of using scrap sized pieces of wood. These are just, you know, not total scrap. I mean, you could turn this into something, but you don't need a great big chunk of wood in order to make something cool like this. So obviously, you know, we we're turning this into this. Uh -huh, there's a lighting. Uh, so we're using scraps and because I have three kids and I know that I can't just make one of anything, I have to make three of everything, uh, I've kind of production lined it. So I've got the waste board set up so I have all of my pieces of wood the exact same size. I can plug it in on some pegs that I've already pre-drilled, uh, pre-carved I guess it would be, um, and I can just kind of bang, 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 bang. Uh, I can also, sorry I'm losing my train of thought already, uh, because I have to make three of these I don't want to you know chew up my waste board any more than I already have to like I did with the guitar stuff so I am using the same size pieces of wood, I'm using a template and that also means I can recycle my index holes so I don't have to drill all kinds of extra holes. So without any more chatting about this I don't think I have anything else on my notes do I? Let's go start customizing this stuff. We're gonna hop over into Onshape. Here we are at Onshape, and like I said, we're gonna hand you guys a spoon. Yay, nice size serving spoon. We're gonna give you a flipper or a spatula, whichever one you wanna call it. And we also have a fork right there. Look at that, isn't it fancy? I didn't get too crazy with the design. I wanted to keep it fairly simple and straightforward. I wanted to give myself lots of area to customize, you know, so on the top here, um, you can carve whatever you want. It can be a design that your kid's done. I thought about doing, you know, like a picture or something like that, but infinitely, infinitely, ultimately, ultimately, I went with just their name. Boom. It'll immortalize that moment in time when they wrote like kids and not like adults, which all three of my kids have pretty sloppy handwriting. So, so sorry guys. Anyway, I am going to show you some of the super easy things that we have in here. So obviously we have our original sketch, which has a base image there. Now let's go to top down view so you can see what I'm talking about. There we go. So, you know, you can 
roll to here. We've already talked about this. If you roll to here, it'll bring you all the way back there. So there's my initial concept. And obviously I didn't rotate the image. I just drew everything square and made it good. Uh, if you turn that off and then you roll all the way to the bottom, roll to the end, you can see that there's, you know, the main extrude, ex extrude, I think I said extrude. And then just some fillets and some other things in there that'll round it out and smooth it out. There's the dish for the spoon. So again, if you want to monkey with any of these things, you can go all the way back to the initial sketch. I can stop talking about it and just do it. Here, let's roll to here. Let's go to a top view so we can see. And you can just, you know, start double clicking on, double click on the sketch. And then you can just start grabbing points and doing whatever you want. So if you want something real funky, knock yourself out, make it real funky. If you want to, you know, make it a little bit longer, whatever you want to do. This is what you're gonna do if you wanna mess with the initial shape. And then things just like extrudes and everything else. So depending on your stock size, we can turn off the sketch now. You can, let's uh, go to the here, let's roll to here. And you can see that that's just how high I extruded it. And then if you roll to here, you'll see that I started to smooth out the bottom a little bit. And then the top fillet or fillet, uh, whoop, roll to here. And you can see that we made it a little bit smoother. So again, all of the things, roll to end, cool. If you again want to monkey with any of the things or change any of the things, you just double click on it and it will bring up the properties. This will show you what edges were, or, uh, yeah, they were filleted, not extruded because that was where it came from. Um, and you can change the radius. You may get some funky things that show up in your geometry, you know, like a pink line that's saying, hey, you can't do that. And then you'll either have to adjust one thing or another to make it work, so in order to do that we are going to grab our part that says spoon i have things mainly labeled nicely uh you're going to right click and you're going to go to export so obviously you don't need to name it spoon spoon and stl is your right format binary inch or imperial or metric whichever one you use and then you would hit export i've already done this so i'm not going to get out of here from there we are going to hop over into v carve if you watch the guitar series you unfortunately had to go through some growing pains with me and how I did my process. I thought I was being a genius by having things in files and just kind of like showing you what you would do instead of actually doing it. I'm gonna try a new experiment with this project and that is I'm gonna have, I've already obviously made the spoon file and I could just roll through it this way, but I kind of thought maybe the guitar thing was overly confusing. So I'm gonna start a fresh file and we're gonna try it this way and I'm gonna use my other file as a reference because I know I'm not gonna remember anything. So, because ultimately, I honestly think I forgot some things in the guitar stuff that I don't think I assumed people would know, but I hoped they would know, and maybe that was the wrong way of going about it. So we're gonna create a new file. As it is, it is a double-sided because we're gonna do flippy flippy, so front and back. My width is not three inches, it's 2.47 actually, and I made this 13.5, and it is not 0.75, so clearly I already changed that, but, Spec your wood, as always, try and have, if you're gonna do, uh, if, if you're gonna experiment, have your experiments the same size as your final. It just gives you a real life carve versus, you know, changing it every single time. I don't wanna do that anymore. So it's a bit of a pain in the butt to get stock all the same size. Um, I know that's a bit of a luxury, but if you can, it makes life easier. Zero Z, Z zero position is 100% up to you what you're comfortable with. I like going off the material surface. I know I can go off the machine bed if I want to. Um, you can zero off the same side, all the things. My setup right here is what I use and it works for me. Um, again, personal preference, so experiment. X, Y, bottom left. My flip direction is this way. Again, depending on what you're comfortable with, if you like going a different way, go a different way. And then we're gonna hit okay. If you bring up your toolpath and you pin it and then you hit your split screen, it will automatically do it nicely and everything will fit in there. The first thing you're going to do after you create your document is go to your modeling tab and you are going to import a component and I need to find out where I'm going. I'm gonna to go to there and you're gonna go and locate, ta-da, whichever one you wanna work on. The beautiful part about this project, like I said, is all three are set up to run off the same size stock, so it's the same process for all three. So if you decide you want three spoons, knock yourself out. If you want to do one of each, like I'm going to end up doing eventually, then do one of each. Locate your STL, which was what you exported from Onshape, and hit open. It's going to bring up this fun preview. As always, my orientation is great. If you want it something else or it needs to be something else, you can. Uh, you don't need to do any of this stuff because it came in correct. 
you do need to, well, you should, I do, center your model. Uh, I don't need to scale my inches and my millimeters because they are correct, but, and this is something that we never did with the guitar stuff because we wanted it the size we brought it in. Um, if you decide that, I think I did it for, I think I did it for this, this actual, this spoon file. I think I messed with the size of it because it was too small. So we've never played with these before, but you can. So you can change the model size before you actually import it, which can be really handy sometimes because for, you know, a generic item like this, I'm not, I mean, if you, if you're worried about being to a specific spec, then, you know, good. But if you're not, and in my case, I'm not, uh, I want the spoon to be a little bit bigger. So I know it's about half inch wide, half inch thick, tall, take your pick on what you want to call it, but that's how thick it is. And I'm okay with that. But at 9.6 inches long and 2.4 inches wide, it's 2.4 is basically the width of my material. Great. But I want to make it a little bit longer. So I'm going to unlock the XYZ ratio and I'm going to make it I mean, if we make it 10.5, watch what happens. Whoop. Right. So you can do this if you want to. Uh, I believe for this, the, the flipper, I thought I was going to make it a little bit thicker. I think it comes in at 0.35 inches. And I said, I've got almost 0.9 inches of material. I might make this thicker and I didn't, but maybe for the next one. So you can play with those. Your model should still be centered. Don't need to play with that position and import. Depth below is usually going to be half the distance of what your actual model thickness is, and that's lovely. You create both sides. I'm not worried about any of the other things. We're going to hit import. Wonderful. You can see that we now have our spoon model, which is exactly what it's supposed to be. We have our limit plane, which is the depth that it's going to cut on each side. So you can see right now, my limit plane is cutting all of the wood material out, but it's leaving behind the red stuff. So. Right off the bat, let's go edit our limit plane. No! Learn your lesson, Scott. Not right off the bat limit plane. Right off the bat, you go to your material setup. I apologize, we may cut that part out. And we do this because of this guy right here. You know, there's the thickness of the material, XY datums, we've already set this one up. Uh, material surface, these three are the same as the original one that we just did over there. But this guy, model position and material. For something like this, you know, you don't have to center it. Uh, you can drop it down just a little bit, but I like to center my model about halfway. It doesn't have to be, but halfway kind of just makes sense to me. So which way do I gotta go? Go this way. One more. Where's the middle? It will pop to evenly divided if you do it right, which, aha, there we go, right? So that now sticks it right in the middle. This is our model. This is extra. This is extra. Again, totally depends whether or not you want to center it, but it just kind of makes sense to me logically. I have a piece of wood that is this thick. Why just skim the surface? I mean, let's put it in the middle. It means it takes a little bit off of each side and we end up with like nice pure stuff in the middle, not potentially wonky stuff on the ends. We don't have to play with our rapid Z gaps unless you want it to be changed. I have never monkeyed with these and they've always worked for me. So let's hit okay. Now we're going to go play with our limit planes starting to get a process down for this. So limit planes, you double clicky on it and it's going to bring up all of the fun info. As I was saying, the red shows what it's going to leave behind or where it's going to stop carving. So it's okay that it stops kind of halfway here, but in order to get that dish, we need to bring it down some more, right? Otherwise we're gonna have like a flat spot in the middle of a spoon, which kind of defeats the purpose of it being a spoon. So you can see, are we still red there? It's still red there. It's tricky to tell with this color. There we go. See, so it went from red in the bottom of the dish to not red. Wonderful. It goes down a little bit further on the sides, but that just, it, honestly, that just means it'll take a couple more trips around the sun and you'll have a nice smooth uh, overlap from top to bottom, right? Cool. Close. The next thing I'm going to throw on is some 3D tabs. And we've been through this before as well. So you go to your clip art, 3D tabs, pick whatever you want. Uh, for some reason, I default to rectangular. I don't know why. I don't have a reason. But again, you can double click on it or you can drag and drop. I'm going to call this guy and I'm going to drag him over there. It's kind of skimpy looking, but this is the cool part about them is look, you can literally do whatever you want with them, right? So you can change the shape by if you uh, if you just double click on one and grab one of the pieces, it will scale it proportionately. If you hold down Alt, it'll allow you to mess with it. So again, that's why I don't kind of care which one I use because you can change it anyway. So, do do do. 
I'm going to go into my modeling tab. I'm going to rename this one to, I don't know, let's call this handle top. And I didn't capitalize it, but I don't care right now. And then I can see over here my 3D preview, which is why I have my window split the way I do. Uh, you can grab the tab and you can grab the spoon and you can go over into your drawing tab and go to your alignment and you can center it that way. And you can center it this way if you so choose. And then it is centered. And that's lovely because, you know, it's just equidistant on the sides. <laughs> You can also see that, uh, let me go back over into our modeling tab, that if you double click on the actual 3D tab, that you can change your shape and your base height. And for me, I think I'm kind of good with what this is, right? Same as pretty much every project I do, I would much rather take, this literally took me, there is two tabs here, tab here, and in your file, there will be tabs here. Uh, I'll explain that one in a minute. I would, it, it took me literally, I don't know, two minutes to sand the tabs off. I didn't even use uh, a machine. I just used my hand and I cut them up with a knife and it was minutes worth of work and minutes worth of work times three is still better than having this thing explode on me, which one of the trials kind of went south. I ended up having to actually glue a block under here because I didn't have enough support there. So there's your tip for the flipper. Anywho, we are going to hold down alt and control, and we're gonna drag up this 3D tab because I'm gonna want one up here. And you can see that it has copied it, and I'm going to hold down Alt again to constrain my rotation. There we go. And you can see from looking at my little preview over here that it looks pretty good. I don't think I need to change the height of that. And if I'm not sure it's centered, I'm gonna just double check that it's centered. It should be. I'll go to my alignment and I center left to right, and it is indeed centered. So we're gonna go back over to modeling. Uh, if you do feel the need to change the, oh, well, I named that wrong, didn't I? Let's just rename it quick. Handle, why can't I capitalize the H today, man? Handle mid, and then handle top, just because it's bugging me. Handle top. There we go. Uh, if you do feel the need to change the height and the base height and all those things, you can just double click on it. And again, you can change the shape height so it does this, but then you have to worry about sanding all of that off. That's foolish to me. So I try and get the tab in there so that it gets around this curve that we've created, right? This nice little round over. I don't want to mess with that too, too much, but I also don't want a tab that's not doing anything. The other thing to remember is that I'm going to copy these to the other side. So however thick it is showing here, it will likely be similarly thick on the back side. So it's not going to be, it'll be double. So I can make this a little bit skinnier if I want to. So I really miss that round over and then, you know, Bob's your uncle. So I'm happy with that. Uh, this one, there appears to be marginally less of a round over, so I'm good with that. And last but not least, I'm going to give Control and Alt another push. And this one I'm going to be a little bit more careful for that reason right there. All right, so this is what I was talking about. If you want to mess with the shape, you can just literally grab any one of the tabs and you'll see that it goes boop. And now it's hidden inside there, but I still have this. I can make this thicker if I want to. And while I'm here, I may as well, just for giggles, to show you guys, you know, you can make it a little bit thicker. Uh, I haven't done the spoon, so we're going to try and see what happens. 3D tabs. Pretty much done. Uh, like I was saying for the flipper, uh, do I have that file open? I don't have that file open. Let's open the file. Pause game. Open existing. Wooden utensils. Working files. Flipper. I'm just going to show you guys what I was talking about because tool pass pin. You can see I added two little walrus tusks here. And I did that because when I did my, when I did this one, uh, I had to kind of mess around and I only had one tab there and it kind of broke off as it was carving. So this whole thing was going like this and vibrating. And with my experiment, this whole backside got kind of screwed up. So uh, my workaround to that was to just glue a, uh, I used uh, CA glue and some painter's tape to basically block this so that when the router was going over it, it had some support. Uh, I believe I've corrected that with these two tabs because these two tabs, let's uh, go to my preview and let's, I don't care about index holes. I care about the roughing, preview that, preview that. And you can see that, do, 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 do. This is just extra side notes because I'm not doing it. But you can see how these two tabs, one, 
and two are going to connect to this block. It should keep it from flapping around so much, flipping around so much. <laughs> so just a little tip that you can either add some support to it if you feel you need it, or hopefully my two tabs are going to hold it in place. I digress. Flipper's gone. Here we go. I'm going to rename this guy. And I'm going to call this scoop side. And I'm going to drag them down to the bottom just so that I have them kind of in order. Top, middle, and bottom. I'm going to close out. And so far, so good. I'm going to change what I did from the guitar stuff. Again, I'm learning too. Uh, I'm going to flip over to the back side, this guy over here. And I'm going to go through the same process again, just because it's fresh in my mind and I'm trying to get some sort of process down. So I don't have to play with the setup because it's already done, but I do have to grab my limit plane. Get out of here. My limit plane and make sure that I'm pleased with how far down it's going. Now, again, that round over is different on the back than it is in the front. So I want to make sure that I get all the way past my nice little round over. Otherwise you get a little ridge. So I'm just going to drag it down and see what happens. Right. Cause this one is quite, see how it's round all the way. It's round all the way. If we stop it here, you're going to have this weird ridge all the way around. So I'm just going to keep on going. Ultimately with something as simple as this, it's only going to cost you a couple of minutes and I'm okay with costing a couple of minutes to make sure that my carve is nice. So I'm just going to keep on going and see what happens. Right. You can start to see it flattening out there a little bit, a wee little bit. Right. Oh, there it is. That's what I was looking for. So you can see where this gradation change kind of is. That's where it kind of flattens out. So I can bring it back up to close to there. Close to there. There we go. You know what? Good enough. Limit plane. Check. I guess I could have done this before, but if you flip back over to your front side, you can grab your 3D tabs and you can right click and you have to be in a view to copy to the other side. So you right click over here, copy to the other side. And as I said last time through the magic of awesomeness, there it is. Now, these look pretty chunky to me, pretty thick. I'm probably going to change them up a little bit. This one, real pain in the butt to move around. Ah! Right. So it's getting, it's intersecting, inter, intersecting, intercepting, take your pick this round over quite a bit. And because I know I have it on the other side, I'm going to make that one a little bit skinnier. So I'm going to go to my handle top. I'm going to change that just a little bit, nothing major. And then I'm going to go down to the next one. Cause again, there's a great big round over here and I'm trying not to mess with that too, too much. So I'm going to click on the mid one. I'm just going to change the base height a little bit. Again, we're not looking for like, steel stronghold, but we are looking for something substantial. So same thing here. I'm going to go down to my scoop side and I'm going to drop it down just a wee little bit. And then, I mean, we've got a pretty substantial 3d tab. And if you go up to here, if you haven't seen it before, this is toggle between one sided and two, is that one sided and two sides? Is that what they call it? Yeah. So this shows you what the one sided carve will be. This little toggly will show you what the whole thing will be, right? So it shows you what you're going to basically end up with. Now I can see here that I appear to have quite a bit of a, quite a bit of room here. I can again, thicken that up if I want to. I probably will just cause it's making me a little nervous. That guy looks pretty good and the top looks fine to me. So just to correct that, I am going to go and close out of here and go back to my front side, which flips it also here. And I can see that my scoop size is a little bit shy. So I'm going to make it just a little bit thicker. There we go. That's going to hold that in, in place very nicely. Back to my backside. Actually, I think I'm done. I am done. So we can start with this going really smooth. I mean, there's a little bit of bouncing around, but I hope you guys are able to follow along. Uh, I'm going to go back to my front side. <laughs> Speaking of making things confusing. And now we're going to do our tool paths, right? I did my settings. I'm doing my tool paths. There we go. So simply enough, you grab your 3D model. You go to your... 3D roughing toolpath, my circular pyramid, as I will now lovingly call it. The really cool part about this is I used a quarter inch ball nose for everything but the customization. So for the roughing, for the finishing, quarter inch ball nose all the way. So I will show you my settings. 175, it handled this no problem in solid cherry. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I bumped it up in G-Sender. That's kind of how I roll. I go fairly conservative 
And then if I feel like it's having no problems or I'm seeing more dust than chips, I'll bump it up in G-Center. That's the beautiful part about that. And alternatively, if I find that I'm carving something that's going too aggressive, I can slow it down. So thank you, G-Center, for being awesome. You are welcome. Here we go. Step over is 50% on a roughing pass is wonderful. You can bump that down to 40 if you want to, but I don't see any reason to. Uh, 175 and I hit OK. Again, we want to go to our model level so that it selects the model as what it's carving out most. Boundary offset. I may have, and I have not put this to the test, so please don't, you know, I haven't seen a comment in the guitar stuff yet about why the hen peck was happening. Uh, and I thought I experimented with this. Maybe I didn't. Uh, the boundary offset I had I had set at an eighth of an inch, 0. 0.125. And I was getting a little bit of hen pecking, and it wasn't carving as nicely as I wanted. So I bumped it up to a quarter inch, which I thought was heavy. And ultimately, it just adds... Uh, here, let's talk about it on here. We're going to use my mouse. Let's go to a top view. Uh, you know, your, your boundary offset is the amount that it goes past this edge all the way around. So an eighth of an inch is only half of the bit because it's a quarter inch bit, right? I think that's why we get henpeck. I don't know uh, because it doesn't, it actually can't drop the bit all the way down versus, versus a quarter inch that's as wide as the bit. It says, hey, I can fit the whole bit in here. Um, it costs you a little bit of time because it goes two passes around the outside instead of one. But if I get a nice smooth carve, so I'm gonna put that to a test later on. For now, it's a quarter inch. My machine allowance is how much extra meat it leaves on there for the finishing pass. 0.02 works. I did not play with my roughing strategy because I just didn't feel the need. I did ramp my plunge moves to half an inch. And here's where I'm probably going to forget what I did. Again, I love my naming convention. So I believe I called this 1A because it's the front side. So 1A runs first. And then I think I called the other one because I did the flipper, right? I did spoon. And then I think I did roughing. And then I think I told myself what it was. Even though everything's a quarter inch ball nose, I think it's just a habit that I've gotten into. So there it is. There's my naming convention. And I'm going to hit Calculate. So you can see here, again, I like to deselect this so I can see what I'm doing. And you can turn off the double sided and it just changes the look a little bit. Preview, selected path. And so this is what I'm talking about with that. Boundary offset, you can see that it took two passes here. If you bump that down to an eighth of an inch, it only does one pass, but I think you end up with hen pecking. So, here we are. Roughing pass, complete. We're going to close out of here. We're still going to have our model selected. We're going to go to our egg on a plate, our finishing pass, as it were. We are going to click on it again. I am not going to go through my settings every time because it's literally the exact same as that first one. So whatever I applied to the first one, I just let it ride for the rest with, again, the exception of the customization. This is fairly wash, rinse, and repeat. Do, 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 do. Nothing changed there. I didn't play with this at all because I didn't feel the need to. And again, one because it's the front, B because it runs second. I told myself what it was and then finishing and again I told myself what bit it was I'm pretty sure that's all I did I have my file right here look at that it's almost like I knew what I was talking about so we hit calculate do, do, do. it takes a little bit longer but not too bad because of the step over being a little bit less and you can see because of the fact that it is right on the edge of my material that you end up with a little bit of funkiness here which Again, I haven't carved the spoon. Maybe I should have done an experiment, but you're going to get some weird tool pathing where it's going to go up and back down. It's not actually going to carve that the way you kind of think it would, but I don't think it's going to matter because it just leaves that little bit there. So, anywho, let's see what the preview looks like and we'll go from there. And if I got to tweak it, I will. Preview selected tool path. Look at her go. And I mean, that's looking pretty good. So, yeah, you can see in the preview, and this again, why it's important to be detail oriented. This is what I'm talking about. So it's going to come down through that channel. It's going to come at the bait, the, the bait, the bit is going to raise up, come across, drop back down and go across. So it's not going to actually carve that part out nice and smooth, smooth. The only way to probably change that is to make your model even skinnier than your piece of wood. Mine's right to the edge. Um, I may change that for your files. The ones that we give you guys. Um, I'm going to test it. Worst case scenario, and again, I know this goes against everything I'm talking about. I'd rather let the machine do it than sand it by hand. Um, I'm not going to re-import it right now because that would be confusing. But 
you could indeed go to your spoon, you could right click and re-import it, and you could squeeze it just to be less than 2.4. You can make it 2.3 or something, and that might actually force it to carve around the outside edge. Maybe uh, when I'm done this, I'll go and check it out and come back and confirm. Future Scott won't come back. <laughs> that was terrible. That was Louie's idea. <laughs> anyway, uh, we've got that done. So, wonderful. And then last but not least, which I guess I could have started earlier, but I didn't want to, is uh, because of two-sided carve, we need index holes. Like I said, and do I want to talk about it now? Because I have to make threes. If I was making one, I wouldn't bother. But because I have to make three, and they're all going to be the same, I cut my stock, I trimmed it all up. This was, a, you know, a weird-looking scrap from a... Uh, it was a leftover from a cabinet door, actually. Um, I cut it all to the same size, and then I drilled... I carved two dowel holes, th uh, three pegs, three dowel holes, into my fake waste board so that I can basically just slide this on, slide it down, and I know that this zero point is always going to be where I want it to be. The beautiful part about that is same size stock, template there, means when I do my index holes into my material, it's good, and when I do my index holes into the waste board, right, and then we have to flip, all three should line up and should be good. Now, whew, the guitar taught me one thing, it's not to say it will happen, because my flippy 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 with the pencils, again, if you haven't watched that one, check it out in the playlist, it was embarrassing. Scott's Confession has more hits for any video than I've done, which is... <laughs> kind of embarrassing, but here we are. Where I'm going with this is I only have to do one set of index holes into my waste board for all three pieces because they will be the same. So we're going over to index holes. This allows us to flip our piece and have it indexed so that the front and the back carve where they're supposed to. So for index holes, we draw a circle. 0.38 inches, that's what I did last time. It's lovely. Uh, I kind of want to look at the other ones. And the reason for that is when this, okay, I can just use this actually. So where I'm going with this is uh, I use double-sided tape to hold this, not double-sided tape, for the love. It's a Friday, my brain's already gone. Uh, I use CA glue and painter's tape for the backside and the front side. It held it like a rock. Um, it was wonderful because these parts right here, uh, even if you screwed in at the top right here and you screwed in at the bottom right here, this part here, this part here, still gonna be kind of flappy which I don't love. I like things being secured. So by taping the whole sucker, even though this middle part, this teal part is carved out, it still holds it really nice and solid. So the reason I'm talking about that is my index holes have to fall within kind of here and here or up here somewhere because if you stick it too close to this boundary offset, you carve out your index hole. Ask me how I found that out. That's part of the reason I had my other file open is so I can see where I had them placed. So I'm actually going to check that out right now. So I threw one way up there. Because I'm not using screws, I'm using tape, I can put them wherever I want. So I threw one up in the corner, one in the middle, and one down at the bottom. So it can only flip in one orientation. So I'm going to copy that now. So my radius, 0.38, because that's how big my dowels are. Do I have them here? I sucked one up with a vacuum by accident yesterday, but there's my dowel. They, uh, they got carved out a little bit. So if you're going to use metal ones, because I am actually toying with getting some metal ones, uh, oh, sorry. No, these ones don't get carved out. The ones on my waste board got carved out. I may talk about that in G-Sender. We'll figure it out. Either way, these ones don't get carved. I apologize. I got confused. But you're going to plunk one, again, wherever you want. I'm kind of close to the edge, but not too close. I'm going to plunk another one, kind of. I can see that I've got quite a bit of meat right beside that guy. So somewhere in that vicinity. And then I got lots of room down here. So just in the middle and we're good. Because I'm using solid wood, I wasn't too worried about these edges blowing out. The machine does such a clean job that it was fine. So, there's my three index holes. I'm going to select them. And I'm going to hit close on that. And I'm going to make a profile toolpath, which I still use my quarter inch ball nose. I did not change to an end mill or like a, a down cut end mill because I made it just a little bit deeper than my flush end. So that, you know, if, if you rounded it, this wouldn't fit in. To the right depth but because i went just a little bit past the depth of this it's not a problem and it bottoms out and everything's good i want to go inside of these i do not need tabs i do add ramps half an inch and oh this is what i'm talking about right here i apologize so my start depth on this one front side is going to go into the material right so my start depth is here and i want to go down point what did i say five two because my plug is an inch so if i went down by the extra bit and the extra bit it fits in there we're going to name this. Now, this is where I may forget. So, 1C, spoon, right? So, the front side, the third one, the spoon, and then this is my reminder. Uh, do I need to... 
I mean, sure, I'll put that in just so we have it. And then this is my reminder, into material. Because that's my reminder to put that one into the material. Now this doesn't have to run third, this could run first, it could run second, it doesn't matter as long as you get them in there. Um, yeah, so put it in whatever order you want, but you know, designate it where you want it. Then you hit calculate and you'll see when we preview it that ba -dum -ba -dum -ba -dum, it drills some holes. Again, it's kind of close here. I, the, I, I mean, I could move it up a little bit, but realistically it's, it's an index hole. As long as you have it there, it's good to go. Front side, I believe is done. Let me think. Front side is done. So now we're gonna go to the back side, right? And while we're on the front side, this is what I should have done with the tabs. You right click, you copy to the other side. And when you flip over to the back side, ta-da! It's already flipped them. They're already there. All you have to do is add a toolpath. I can't copy a toolpath on the front side, right? I could duplicate it. No, because then it keeps on the front side. Nope, we're on the back side, folks. Here we go. So while we're here, we may as well grab these three. And this is a, I gotta stop touching my beard. I'm itchy today. I don't know what's going on. I am going to create a profile toolpath. This one's a little bit different, right? Because this one is gonna go into the waste board. I only have to do this once, technically speaking. I can do it in the other two files or you can do it in the other two if you want to. Um, it will be in the other files because if you only do one of them, then you need all, you need it. But uh, the starting depth is going to be the depth of my material, right? Because instead of drilling into here, I'm now drilling into the waste board, which would be way down here. It's hard to do this without a B-roll operator here. So it's gonna be down here. 0.88 inches is the thickness of my material. So 0.88 is where my start depth will be. It's still gonna go half an inch, just a wee bit over half an inch down. Still inside, still add ramps and again, this one is kind of important to have it run first. The front side, it doesn't matter where the index holes run in order. This one has to run first because otherwise you have no index holes to flip to. So this is the back side. So it gets a two, it gets an A because it's first. It's still the spoon. And I'm still gonna tell it that it is, oh, I didn't put index holes, did I? I usually put index holes. All right, that's the size I can put index just so I know I should have done the other one, sorry. And then this is my, again, my reminder into waste board. Right, enter. It's going to give you an error saying you are potentially going to damage your waste board. We know. So we're gonna say, okay, wonderful. And then again, when we preview this, it's gonna show it going through your material, but your material will not be there. It's gonna be blank, which is why we tell it to start at 0.88, the thickness of your material. So it can skip all that and just start into your waste board. Let's close out of our preview. This next part is literally wash, rinse, and repeat. You are going to select our model. We are gonna to go to our circular pyramid, our 3D roughing, click on it. Again, quarter inch ball nose, model, level. I left the boundary and the machining the same because it just worked. I'm going to ramp my moves half an inch. That seems to work nicely. And I'm gonna call this two, which is the backside, B, second in line, spoon, spoon. <laughs> and uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. this is roughing. Again, I'll tell myself that it's a quarter inch ball nose and I'm going to hit calculate. You'll see that it does its thing. And because we're only one sided, it's really cool. After we get the, the next path done, we'll show the whole thing carved out It's lovely. So for now, we're going to hit preview selected tool path and you'll see that it roughs it out pretty nicely. Again, we may have a couple of little flat spots right there. I think skinning it up when you import the model will solve that problem, but I'll tell you after. I could tell you now, but I'm gonna tell you after. We are going to continue trucking along and we are going to go to our egg on a plate finishing toolpath. Same, same, same. That's why it's wash, rinse, repeat, right? So model, boundary offset, uh, that's all good. And then we just gotta name it 2C spoon uh, finishing. 0.25 ball nose, and that's going to be a calculate. It takes an extra second. I want to turn off the preview just so you can see that. And then, da, 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 da. look at her go. Very nice. So this is the cool part that I was talking about. If you flip your single-sided and double-sided, ha ha, that's what I was doing that for. And you can see that indeed I was correct that there is a couple of funky spots right there where it doesn't carve. And right there where it doesn't carve. 
part of me wants to go and check. Part of me is saying I'm not worried about it because it would probably take, again, two seconds to sand that out. So not really bothersome. If you're doing like a production line, like a hundred of these, okay, well then maybe you want to work that kink out. And again, I think that kink could be worked out by just skinning your, skinning your import model. For me, again, I haven't run the spoon at the time of doing this. Your file may end up having two tabs down here if I find that this is a little too wobbly. Uh, right here. I don't know that it will. Uh, again, the flipper needed the walrus tusks in there to really steady it up. Um, but this is going to be taped and glued. This is all going to be taped and glued on the backside. I think it's going to be pretty steady. It, was, it wasn't really going anywhere. So that's about it for that portion of things. So let's close out of that. Now, I need to find a kid name or whatever I want to customize. Oh, I dragged my, my my model. I didn't mean to do that. If you ever do that, if you like grab the model, you can kind of monkey move it. I don't even know how I did that again. But if you move it, just undo. <laughs> uh, I'm going to save my file because I haven't... Eh, do I have to save it? No, because I've got it in the other one. We're good. Uh, here's where the tutorial is like creative at your limits. Maybe not, but uh, this is where we take where I thought it would be, uh, again, as a father of three, I went, okay, well, it's really cool that we're making wooden utensils. My wife does like to bake. My kids do like to cook with her. Um, these are wonderful and useful. And quite honestly, I really love wooden tools. They, they don't require a ton of care. People think they do. You can't throw them in a dishwasher. Um, but I bring them out once a month and give them, you know, a recoat of wax. And it's, it's literally like it's a salad bowl finish. So it feels nice on your hands. Um, super simple. So I don't mind, but great. I made you wooden utensils. Woo. Well, we're going to make it woo by adding something cool that the kids have added to it. So I happen to have my kids handwriting in a number of places for a number of reasons. Um, I was going to do this for the other kid. I don't think I have his signature. So we're just going to do it for another, another kid. I happen to have three to pick from. So in order to do this customization, again, this could be a drawing, their name, um, anything you want. We need to basically get an image of it and vectorize it so we can carve it. So in this case, I'm going to import a bitmap. There's my oldest. So I'm going to open it up and there's his name written by Tan last year. That was for the Christmas yearbook. Got a couple of different ways of going about this. You could take your image into Illustrator or, you know, Inkscape and trace it out there and get your toolpaths and import a toolpath. Uh, you can do the same thing in here, which is why I'm not going to go into Illustrator and do that. Uh, and you could even go to your bitmap, tr bit, blah, 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 your trace bitmap, the little robin here. And if you do that, uh, you can mess with the number of colors, black and white, your fitment on the corners, your noise level, you can mess with all of it. If you hit preview, it'll show you what kind of toolpath it's going to give you. Tay's name is actually pretty easy. Um, I am using a V-bit for this. So for this particular case, it would probably work out really good because I'm giving it the boundary that the V-bit needs to go inside. Uh, for this particular one, is it gonna be upside down? For this one, hey, nope. For this one, I didn't actually give it a boundary. I gave it just a single line and I used a V-bit. I kind of cheated, um, but it still works. You get the same effect. You still get a V-bit, but a little less malarkey to mess around with. So. I'm going to go the way I did with the flipper way. So I'm just going to close out of this and I'm not actually going to use it. I'm just going to grab my draw line. And again, this you would do the same thing in Illustrator or any other vector program. And then you could import the vectors and you'd be where we're going to be when we're done this. But all you can do is, you know, clicky. And because it's handwriting, I'm purposely not just going straight across, right? I'm trying to mimic his handwriting where some of the bulges and the things are. Right click to get rid of it. And then again, I'm gonna go here and kind of mess around. And again, if you want to uh, make it more bendy, so not just a, a hard corner like that is right there. When you click, you can drag and it'll bring up a bezier, a bezier. And then you can kind of bend it a little bit more. So again, depends on what you wanna do. This is the customization part where if this was a piece of art, or a drawing, you might want to spend a little bit more time messing around with it, but I'm going really simple this year because unfortunately my wife is going to probably see this video before Mother's Day. So guess what? I'm taking one for the team. 
you guys are getting a real nice video and I'm going to have to come up with another, another idea. Bugger. I knew that going in. So again, just going along, trying to trace some of the bumps to make it look authentically handwritten. Do, 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 do. And am I going to be able to, I didn't actually do it this way. I already had their signatures from another project. So I forgot how to do this part. <laughs> I want to extend this to a comma point at intersection. So if I click on this and then I click on this, it will connect it. So if you didn't catch that, what I just did was there's a gap between the top of the T and the stick down, right? Well, I don't want that to, if, if that's how his, his handwriting was, then I would do that, but it's not. It actually connects. You can see it connects here. And obviously I should probably go into node edit mode and maybe make this a little prettier. What was that? I did put a point there. So you can see the difference, right? The bezier has got the nice round. And if it's not a bezier, it does just hard corner. So you can do whatever you want with that. If you, what is the, hold on. I gotta find the keyboard shortcut for it because there's gotta be one. Oh, there's not. There's gotta be a way to convert that. Smooth point, that's why. Again, I was working in Illustrator in my brain. You can actually keyboard shortcut that, but you can smooth the point and it'll create a bezier for you if you didn't initially, right? So we're gonna call that pretty close. I'll move that one over, I'll move that one over. It's not exact, I'm not worried about perfection here. Just worried about close enough. Move that one down. So again, I just went into node edit mode, messing around a little bit. There we go. Now, node edit mode and I'm out. I still have a gap. I don't like it. Oh, what happened? What happened? I don't want that. Sorry, I selected my picture by accident. Here we go. I don't want this gap in here. So I'm going to go to the this guy here extend vectors you click on it and then you click on the first point and you click on the point you want it to intersect obviously i couldn't click it this way you know i couldn't click this and then this because that's not going to intersect but if i click this one it shows you a ghost line that's what that gray line is and then click it here and boom it bridges the gap and now i got a, a nice sweet um t looking thing so i'm going to go through i'm going to finish off the rest of this i'm going to let someone time lapse it because I don't want to talk while I do this whole thing. So we're going to finish off his name and then we'll come back and we'll add two path to it. Ta-da! So as I was saying, if uh, for some reason you really did want uh, kind of the channel version of this, channel meaning like the, the outline. So like obviously this is going to follow this tool path, but it's not going to give me the exact, you know, thick and thinness of the way he drew it. So a little bit thinner here, a little bit thicker there. It's not going to give me that. It's going to give me one consistent width because that's what the V-bit's doing. If you want that variable one, then you would have to do either trace image or you'd have to trace the outline. And then you would get more of that variation that you're looking for because the V-bit would dart in and out. I'm not worried about that level of detail. Um, Maybe that'll be the next tutorial. V-bits and tracing images and all the fun that can come with it. But for now, just to keep it simple. But again, if this was like a, a, a child's drawing, you could just do the same thing. Go in, trace your lines. I find that it is um, part of the reason I like this versus the outline one, which I lose the very, the, the variety. I lose the variety of depth, but it's a really fast carve. Um, when you do it this way, V-carve is able to just interpret it, it's simple lines, it's not 10,000 little points that make it up because that's ultimately what you would end up with, right? You'd end up with just little nodes all over the place and it's heavier on the file. End of the world heavy? Absolutely not. Will it work? Yes, but for something simple like this, again, if it was a stick figure or, you know, in this case, this kid loves fish. If it was a fish, I would just trace the outline of his fish and boom, you'd still get the same feel. You can very clearly tell that that is my daughter's handwriting. Yay. I don't need the image anymore, so I'm going to get rid of it. There it is. I'm going to group the young man's signature. And in this case, I do want it on the backside. I did that purposely because, you know, while you're using this, cool, but eh, you know, I thought the backside was gonna be fancy. So I threw it on the backside. We're gonna double click it. We're going to drag it over to the backside. We're going to scroll in and just free rotate it however size, whatever size, wherever placement, whatever makes it work. 
I'm gonna scale it down a little bit. Obviously the white, and I mean, maybe, maybe not obviously, um, the gradient represented here shows you the curvature of what it's going to carve. I gotta stop looking at the monitor. I gotta start looking at this. <laughs> um, so where it shows you very white or close to white, that means it's, it's going to be not flat, but flat, flatter than where the gradient goes and you can see it falls off to more of a, a curve and that's where all, obviously the deepest part is. So I gotta stop saying obviously, that's my word of the video. I'm gonna place this kind of as central as I can on here. I'm not worried about wrapping the the signature in this particular case or the artwork. I'm not worried about wrapping it to the contour of the spoon because I know I have a fairly flat surface. I am going to scale it down just a little wee bit more. And I do go deep enough with my carve that um, here I'm not too worried about. If it does happen to tail off a little bit, excuse me, I'm about to sneeze. <laughs> Woo! Survived. Uh, if my letter, letter does happen to tail off or it's not quite as deep as it is here, I'm okay with that. Or you can ultimately scale it down so that there's more of it in that white area. How big was their signature on here? That's going to be my, eh, call it an inch and a half long. So that's 11, 10, da, da, da. it's about, you know, if we put this up here, we're a little smaller than that one. But again, I can do this and Valen's name on the flipper was hanging over the sides a little bit, kind of like that. Maybe I'll let the Y hang over a little bit more instead of the T. There we go. Position it. Create a profile toolpath. And again, this is, if I'm being totally honest, I don't know how many people actually do things this way. I think typically when people use V-bits, they're going to use V-carve because it's for V-bits. Um, this is where you would go. You would go to the V-carve one if you were going to have the outline instead of the stick figure, as I'm gonna call it. Uh, and that would allow you to get the full kind of um, tool options that V-bits normally go for. In my case, because I'm just doing stick figures, I'm going to go to profile. I am going to 100% cheat it, and I'm going to say, select my bit, and I'm gonna go, I'm gonna have to actually, uh, there's my 30, there we go, right? And all of this is good. I'm going to turn this down to 30 and you could, your plunge rate really doesn't matter too much because we're going very slow. Um, I don't know how many of you know this, but if you are doing a carve and you're getting it, I, I think it, ten, it tends to happen for me, the fuzzies around the edges um, tend to happen with more detailed stuff. If you do happen to get that, when I first carved her name out, it was fairly fuzzy in there. Run the path again. Now you can run the path again and it should help clear it up. Or you can change your uh, your passes where your last pass is just a little bit. Uh, either way, there's your options. But I found when I was at 50, it was buzzing a little bit too fast and I didn't like what was happening. So I slowed it down a little bit. This is like crazy. Like this isn't a matter of um, ability for the machine or the, the, the bits. This is just a matter of like a cleaner cut I found. So uh, I'm going to select this. There we are. And then my starting depth. This is that cool thing I showed you with the guitar video is um, if you hover over any part of your 3D model, it will show you where you are at. So I want to be on the back side because that's where I want to carve it. And I'm going to actually turn off this thing because it makes it a little confusing. There we go. If I hover over any part of my 3D model, you'll see the number right down here in the bottom of your screen changes because it tells you how, how deep it is. Well, I want to go right about here, right in the middle. And it tells me it's down 0.19 inches. So that's going to be my start depth, 0.19 means it's going to go down 0.19 and then it'll start carving. I do not want it to carve 0.52. That would be ludicrous. I think I had it at 0 0.04. 0 0.4? 0 0.04. Let's go find out because I don't remember. Let's go to my backside. You can ignore this part. This is again my reference. 0.04. Look at that. So I want it to go down 0.04. I'm using a 30 degree V-bit. My settings are in there. I want to go on the line for this again. So it will literally just trace that out and it gives you the V-bit look. Cheating? Sure. If you have a different way of doing it or, you know, put it in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And while you're down there, you know, clicky, subscribe, all the fun things because you want to hear all about the cool stuff we're doing over here. I'm going to add ramps, my half an inch. And this is, I believe, so it's the back two. It's the fourth one that I want to run. It's still the spoon. 
And I'm just gonna call this name because that's what it is. And then I'm gonna call it 30 V-bit so that I know that I use a 30 degree V-bit. And then I'm gonna hit calculate. And there is my little preview up there. And if we turn that off, but preview this, you'll see that, ta-da, customize. And you can see again where it tails off a little bit. It's not as deep here as it is there because there is some roundness to this. And I'm okay with that. If you're not okay with that, scale it down just a little bit. Move that up a little bit. I've got a little bit of room there, right? But I'm not worried about it. And I think that is about it. So the fork, the spoon, the flipper are all the exact same process. It's all setting your limit planes, adding your tabs, adding a couple of tool paths, and saving tool paths, which is the last thing we are going to do here. So we're going to close out. And unlike the guitar stuff, we're always running stuff independently stuff being tool paths. I would run one, 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 even though um, I could group them. This one I grouped and it worked out really nice. So the roughing bit, the finishing, and uh, see, I'm gonna change this one. I'm gonna give that an index. So I know that, oop, not index, index. There we go. These three, I ran at the same time. Not the same time, but I saved them as one tool path. So you'd click all three because they're all the same bit. When you go in here, it's gonna tell you quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter inch. It will allow you to do that. If one of them was different, it would say you are not allowed. You hit save tool path. This is uh, working files. This is the spoon and this is the G code and what? Why did I already have that in there? What? Oh, I don't know what somebody was doing there. Well, you can see that for some reason I had the flipper saved in the spoon. I couldn't tell you what I did there. Maybe, oh, I probably copied it. I don't know. Either way, I'm gonna keep with what I have here. Although I'm gonna change that. So this is all the paths. Oh, that's what I did. I had front and stuff in there. Well, that's what the one kind of delineates. I don't know why I had front in there and back. Anyway, uh, 1A would indicate to me that that is my front side. Anything that's a two is the back side. So I'm not even gonna put front in there because I already know what I'm doing. If you wanna put front or back, go right ahead. However, I am gonna say all paths and I am gonna say that it is a quarter inch ball nose just so that I remember that and I'm going to hit save. I'm gonna delete those other ones next. Then I'm going to flip it over. Some of these you can, some of these you can't group. So I cannot group my index into my wasteboard like I did on the other side because that one went into the material, this one's going into the wasteboard. So this one has to be run independently. So I'm gonna save it. And again, this is why I give it my name and convention. I don't need to change anything. I'm going to hit save. These two, however, the roughing and the finishing can run together because they're the same size bit and they're doing the same, they're good oper a good operation. They're doing every video, at least once I have to do this. Apparently it's like my hard reset. Because they are doing a similar action, we're good to put them together. We're gonna save it and I'm going to just change this to roughing and finishing. Finishing, there we go. It's still gonna run second, so I'm still gonna give it a B, but I'm gonna ignore C when I save my, customized name or whatever you want to design. And again, you kind of have to run them in this order because you can't do the design before you've done the actual 3D carving because then you just erase it. <laughs> Anywho, it's telling me that it's a 30 degree V bit. I'm going to save my tool path. I'm going to call this, you know, backside fourth, which is technically third because I'm ignoring C like I said, and it's the name and it's a 30 degree V bit. And I'm going to hit save and I'm going to hit close and we're done in under 17 hours, unlike a guitar. I would like to say that this is not nearly as difficult as a guitar either. So we're gonna fire up G-Sender. We are going to load up some files. I will probably set up some more cameras and switch some things around and I will show you what I was talking about with my kind of template idea so that I can mass produce three of these. <laughs> mass produce three. <laughs> anyway, we'll show you how to do that and uh, we'll get the carving out of spoon. Stick around. Here we are on the dark side. We are going to, oh, dark side, G sender. I'm not sure why it's dark side, but you know, rockets, dark side of the moon, pink Floyd. No. We're gonna connect to our machine. We are going to unlock it. We are going to, uh, I actually know my machine is in the right spot. So this is the um, coordinate that it's telling it. I'm going to say, no, I'm gonna zero it all right now. I do have to find my Z height again, which is fine because I, the last one I did was with the V bit. Uh, we are going to load a file. Spoon, all paths, quarter inch ball nose, open. Truth be told, 
that's about it for G Sender. I'm going to swap my cameras because this one's not going to hang out here while I'm doing that stuff. And I will talk to you a little bit about that and we're going to get going. So, giddy up, let's start carving. Here we are over at what I still call the Terminator because he's still got some vintage parts on him. Uh, I have clearly not replaced my original waste board, but instead of punching more holes in it from the guitar leftovers, I threw on a scrap piece of all, well, scrap piece of MDF. Uh, on top. It is aligned nicely, but again, I learned my lesson from that whole fiasco and I am not relying on my wasteboard being square to my machine anymore. Uh, so this doesn't really matter. It's just there to not put more holes in my eventually pretty wasteboard. What is important is that you can see here. Can you see? Oh, it's blocked off. Hold on. Right here and right here and right here. Here, I have three holes just drilled into my fake wasteboard. And I did that so that, again, because I have three pieces that I have to do that are all identical in material size, not obviously subject matter, I can take it, I can slide it against, and I can slide it down. And now there's my kind of template, my zero starting point for all of them. So when this is zeroed, which it will go back there, uh, all I have to do for each one is grab my piece, put my tape on, I'm going to put down some CA glue. I'm going to put some accelerator on there. And then when I flip it over, all I have to do is kind of push it along the top of there, line it up and kablamo, I end up with a bit of a production line. So it just takes some guesswork out. Uh, and even when my, when I flip, everything is good because my pieces of wood are all the same size. Everything is based on center. So, uh, Typically speaking, I would say, you know, before the guitar video, I'd say, hey, you know, you can just flip it over and everything's great, but I will not do that. The reason why this works really nicely is I'm going to have my index holes drilled in here. I'm going to have my index holes, dr index holes drilled in here. And worst case scenario, I can always pull the plugs out and I'm lining up to my index holes and I know that they are, you know, they're good to go. So it's just kind of a, a, a time saver slash, um, you know, time saver, time saver. It's all about time saver. Uh, having said that, and this is what I was talking about in the other video, is some of my plugs did get zipped because I put them in kind of dumb locations. So <laughs> if you don't want your your dowels to get zipped, then put them in spots where the machine is not going to go to the edges and cut them off. It's dowel, it's cheap, and it doesn't get destroyed by a router bit, so I don't really care about them that much. So I'm going to leave them as they are. Uh, I am going to put them back in, and I can't see what I'm doing because I'm working around my machine. There we go. They're in. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. I don't know if I want to do this with a machine in the way. Usually that's pushed all the way there. Let's push it all the way there. Let's see if we can still see what's going on in the camera. There we go. Can we see what we're doing? We can see what we're doing good enough. All right. So again, tapes down in the right spots. It matches up. So when I flip, we're good. Add a little bit of CA glue. Boo -doo 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 -doo. You do not need to add a ton of this stuff, but enough to hold it in place. Cause again, Wasting material sucks. Okay, put our lid back on. Make sure that you put your CA glue on first and not your accelerator because it will dry by the time it gets there. Make sure that you know which way you're going to flip it. I do it the same way I flip my board. So I'm just gonna do this here and a couple of quick sprays. And then again, I use the tops of my dowels to line it up and then slide it down. Push down for literally like one second. I usually hold on for a little bit more and then she's going nowhere. That's about it for that whole explanation. We're going to carve the front side. We're gonna drop those index holes in and then uh, we'll peel it all off. We'll flip it and then we are gonna CA glue and tape the back side again, just to hold those edges down and to hold this block in place. And uh, by the time we're done, we're gonna have a sweet looking spoon. So time to get carving.
as you can see, I have my front side carved. I have drilled my index holes. Uh, clearly I've done one experiment before and that's what those ones are for. So we're gonna ignore those two. That's why also why I've written old on them. Um, it's up to you what you wanna do, but you can plug these in one, two, and three, whichever you're comfortable with, or you can stick them in here. But this is what I was talking about earlier. I guess I can get rid of this tape now. This is my front side. So I don't love wasting material, but like product, but man, it's so much nicer than putting screws in and messing around with them. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna knock the dust out. Like I said, do you need to tape this? No. When I flip this over and I push these on these index holes, it holds pretty tight. Uh, it's not gonna move X or Y, it's my Z that I'm concerned about. And considering I'm trying to make this thing, you know, as even as I can, I want it to be where I want it to be. So that's why I do this. You, uh, it's up to you. You can put tape in between or you can just peel your pegs out. Sorry, your index holes. My other tip, have a pair of pliers handy. Eh, vice grips close enough. Cause sometimes these things don't want to come out and your bare hands, unless you got some sort of crazy grip, I can't get them out, but I digress. So I still got audio going, right? Yep. And there I am. And now I got tape stuck to my finger for the love. Ah, seriously. I, I like you too, bud. Anywho. So I do have some lines drawn on here. So I know where this should be. It's about as long as that. And I'm going to do this. And the simple way to open up those holes is just to grab an X-Acto when you're done. So again, this is just my process. There are a whole bunch of different ways to do the exact same thing. So if you find a way that you like better, let us know. We wanna hear about stuff because I'm here to learn too, right? So I know that those are my old ones. So I'm going to, can we see this on the camera? Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna see what we can do. I'll cut left-handed. I'm just gonna slice these out. That one, oh, I didn't go far enough, did I? Yeah, that's right at the very top, that's fine. So I'm just giving these a slicey slice and that one doesn't need one because I'm probably not gonna put one up the middle because there's nothing to hold on to up the middle. Now, I can shove my pegs through. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. Sometimes you might need to give them a little tappy tappy, but maybe not. So next, again, I'm gonna tape off the entirety. Oh, that's a scrappy piece of tape. I don't like it. Try again. There we go. I'm just gonna cover this whole area up. I will end up again cutting a, the index hole out. I just wanna make sure this thing's not going anywhere and for the extra 10 seconds worth of work to make sure it's not going anywhere, it seems well worth it to me. So give it a little slice, a little slice, and that will actually, if I'm being honest, it tightens it up even more. My dowel holes are pretty much bang on for fitment, but this just really makes sure. I cut that one too short too, that's all right. Where am I going with this? Right up the middle, sticky stick, get all the things out. I just fold the tape over, it's not gonna matter, even if the router bit hits it, right? There we go, gives us something good to stick to. One more piece, maybe long enough this time. There we go. Right to the edge. Slidey slide, smoothie smooth. I try to make sure there's no bumps in it just cause I mean, we're talking millimeter here, but uh, where's my index hole? Right there. A Couple of slices just to help it go in a little bit smoother. Okay, out of the way. And if I'm being totally honest, I probably should have checked this first, but it feels pretty good. And again, if you need to pull out these pegs because they're in the way, well then, there you go. Hey, what are you doing? Sneaky. But you can see that. Eee! That one might just be extra tight. There we go. All right, so my Z's good, my fit's good. I'm gonna take it off. Yeah, that one's really grumpy. Oh, that's a new one, that's why. These ones have been worked in a little bit. That one's a new one. So again, clear off all your tape, make sure you're good. 
a little dabble of glue just to hold things in place. I'm going to give the block end maybe a little bit more. And I'm going to skip where the spoon part is. And I know that that's got one all the way up to the top, so that's good. And then I'm going to grab my handy dandy accelerator. And we're going to give this a spray. It doesn't hurt the wood, and you're going to sand it anyway, so it doesn't really matter. I try and do this fairly quickly, and half the time I don't do it quickly enough. But that should be lovely. So that's the whole reason for, you know, the pegs in the board and everything, because at least I know that I'm starting at the same point. I don't have to keep finding Zed. I didn't look at the camera for like five minutes there. Crazy. But that's held in place. These edges are good. That's good. I know that my Z is already in the right spot, and I know that my height's already good, because it's literally just the reverse of this, right? So that's kind of why I did this. Uh, that should not be safe to go across there, so I'm going to move that out of the way. We're going to clear some stuff off the bench. We're going to hit go to X, Y, zero, because it should just drive it straight back. Yes, yes, I know. Squiddy. Ah, squiddy in the way. And then I'm going to drop it to my Z0, just to double check. Boom. Pretty good so far. I'm pretty happy. Uh, I'm going to load my next file. I apologize if that light behind me is really blinding. It's supposed to make me look beautiful, but, you know, here we are. <laughs> no, no, I'm not going to make that joke. All right. We're ready to carve the backside. Similar to the front side, it's just going to do its thing. I'm going to... Put on my handy dandy dust collecty. Try and suck up as much dust as I can. Unfortunately, because this is such a skinny piece of wood, um, you know, the dust collector can only do so much. And my dust collector, quite honestly, needs to be emptied. So it's part of the reason I'm getting a little over, you know, a little bit of stuff firing out of it. But we'll survive. I'm going to raise that up just to not ding my board to start. And we are going to carve the backside. So, I don't know how much of that's going to make it in the video, but I ended up uh, going back into V-Carve and making his signature a little bit deeper. The first pass that I took in my infinite wisdom was still set at 50 uh, inches per minute, and it actually kind of blew a couple spots out because I didn't turn it down. So, that's what I was talking about in the video where I turned that way down because with, you know, his signature in particular, it's, it's such a delicate thing. I wanted it to be a little bit, um, a little bit slower, just so it didn't blow things out because there are little tiny pieces in there. Having said that, let's uh, zoom this guy out of the way because we are done carving. Oh, that's super slow, that'll take an hour. There we go. And again, I'm making sure I don't slam my machine into the rails because that would mess with my zero and I can get it again, but let's try not to mess with things if we don't have to. However, we're gonna use a little paint scraper or a mud knife, take your pick. We use them for both. And you will see that, ta-da, the CA glue and tape trick worked lovely. Everything stayed in place. And now I have a spoon that just needs a little bit of sanding and a little bit of wax. It didn't work, did it? All right, I'm gonna pop this over on the bandsaw and then I will be back and I will finish sanding and we'll be good to go. Stick around. Do -do 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 -do. It's almost good enough to eat off of. Ta-da! 
there it is front and back so again a couple spots to sand down uh you could use a bench sander you can use a spindle sander or you can just bust out some 180 and hand sand it all down that's probably what i'm going to do so we can time lapse through this part and you can watch me sand her down little trick if you want to i find that uh, the grain pops a little bit more you can see in there I, I don't know how easily it is to see in the lighting but the inside of his name is not uh actually got any wax or anything on it so it looks a little bit lighter it doesn't really look as good so i just grab a little dab of wax it's not going to focus because it's so little on the end of my paintbrush and just kind of smush some of it in there it darkens it up and makes it pop a little bit more. You don't need a ton and you don't want to put so much in there that it stays all, you know, like gummy in there. So if you got extra, then just stick it somewhere else on the handle and wipe it in. But it just helps make it pop a little bit more. And because it's just like a super easy wax, give it a wipe down when you're done. Ta-da! Feels lovely. So! I don't know guys, seemed like a pretty good idea and we gave you some free files and mom gets something useful and she gets something that reminds her of her wonderful children and the reason she's a mother in the first place. So uh, this is not just a Mother's Day present as far as I'm concerned. I'll probably make some of these for the rest of my family and some of my friends because it's customizable, it's useful, uh, you know, the sky's the limit with the wood that you use. I'm probably gonna go buy some olive wood if I'm being honest. These are cherry and they look lovely and it smells really nice when it's cutting, but I really like olive wood. So that's about it. Super quick hitter, S fairly easy, fairly straightforward. We hope you found it helpful. We hope, we hope you found it handy. I sound like red green right now. Happy Mother's Day. Make sure you click, make sure you link, make sure you're subscribed. I don't think I have anything else to say other than Good luck, post, hashtag, keep us in the loop, and we'll see you around the CNC. Let's try that again. The microphone's falling down my shirt. Try again. Sorry, you're gonna have to cut this part out. Skills testing questions. Is that good? Nope, it's still not good. That should be good. All right, we got this going on. All righty.